The terms mask, ventilator, and PPE has become part of our vocabulary. The thought of running out of those things is part of our fears. But right here at Queen's University, there's an initiative to 3D print personal protective equipment for Kingston's frontline workers. I'm joined by Matthew Snow. So Matthew, how did this initiative start? Hi Donna, thanks for having me. Um, I started this project about uh, two and a half weeks ago with a couple of my uh, other mm -hmm. classmates. Um, as you mentioned, we're medical students here at Queen's University, and we had been seeing the evolving situation with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and, and particularly uh, the inability to access adequate personal protective equipment at hospitals, even right here in town at KGH and uh, as well as many local clinics. And so uh, we thought about creative ways that we as medical students might be able to help uh, supply the uh, ever-increasing demand. Um, particularly because we were pulled off of all our clinical rotations and, and felt like we wanted to be doing something more to be able to help. Uh, and that's when we thought about doing uh, 3D printing um, as, as a possible uh, alternative way of sourcing uh, personal protective equipment creatively. And so that's where things began about two and a half weeks ago. Wow, only two and a half weeks. That's, that's amazing. And, you know, tell us what a 3D printer does. And remember, you're dealing with using a photocopier. Right. Um, well, everyone's probably familiar with conventional printers if you have to print a document from your computer or that sort of thing. Um, but that's only printing in, in two dimensions. It just prints on a flat surface on a piece of paper. Um, when we're talking about 3D printing, we're talking about printing an actual object. Uh, and so by using 3D printers, we're able to make objects like masks, um, objects like um, uh, face shields, uh, and other forms of uh, personal protective equipment um, right at home for, for anyone who has access to one of these 3D printers. So how long does it take to produce, let's say, one shield? Uh, so the shield that we're producing right now uh, takes about an hour or so um, to make start to finish. Um, we're also looking into making a couple models of uh, masks, and those take a little bit longer in the range of about uh, two to three hours or so. Um, but collectively, with, with the number of printers that we have going, we're able to um, produce quite a large number of uh, these essential equipment for our healthcare workers. And so far, in two and a half weeks, how many have you produced? Uh, we just got a, a number in today. If I just look at the numbers here, um, we're up to about uh, nearly 2,500 units between masks and shields. That is really impressive. Now, are they in use now or are they part of the stockpile? Yeah, so our, our goal with this project isn't um, to replace uh, Health Canada approved equipment. Our, our goal is really to produce, uh, as, you say, uh, as you say, a stockpile, uh, which would be available to healthcare workers should they run out uh, of sort of the ideal um, equipment. Uh, that being said, there, there are a few clinics in town who've already run out of equipment or, or who are um, poised to run out in the next week or two. Uh, and so there are actually a few clinics already using our face shields. Um, and uh, as far as our masks, we're actually looking into testing them uh, to get some additional approval so that uh, they can be used more effectively in, in, in um, clinical contexts. I understand you're sharing your technology with other centers. That's right, yeah. So we've um, been in touch uh, with other medical students uh, across uh, the province. And in fact, we've been in touch with groups across Canada um, who've been trying to start similar initiatives uh, to fulfill um, needs in their uh, local areas. Uh, we, even though we only started about two and a half weeks ago, uh, we are one of the first groups in the province to have started this initiative. And so even though we're sort of forging ahead, um, uh, with with the projects here, um, we're already in a position to be able to um, uh, provide advice uh, and and uh, guidance to some of the other initiatives that have been started up in in other areas of the province. Just a, a curiosity, Matthew. What are your goals uh, personally? What do you hope to get into when you graduate? Uh, so I, I'm uh, a fourth year student now. Uh, I've already actually uh, matched to a residency program. I'll be starting general surgery uh, here at Queen's University uh, at the beginning of July this year. 
Oh, all right, great. So it's nothing to do with face masks or masks, although I guess you do use them. We'll, we'll be using them. <laughs> For sure. So, you know, this is important. It's impressive and it's important. So what can we as members of the public do to help you? Uh, so there's a few things. Um, broadly speaking, the, the, the best way to help um, with uh, uh, guiding us sort of through the course of the pandemic um, is to follow the instructions of, of um, the uh, local health officers and the Ministry of Health. Um, and, and that's to do things like social distancing, to maintain good hygiene, um, to avoid touching your face, your mouth, that sort of thing. Um, with respect to our project specifically, um, we've been very lucky to have such a high level of community involvement. Um, a lot of people have donated time and resources uh, to help us out. Um, we actually started a GoFundMe uh, a couple of weeks ago to try and raise enough money to cover the cost of the printing materials and the other raw materials that we need in order to um, produce all this equipment. Uh, and so we have that uh, GoFundMe still up and running. And if, if anyone is willing and able to um, donate a bit of money to that end, it can really help us uh, uh, produce and provide the uh, personal protective equipment that is so needed in the community. Well, this, again, it's important and it's uh, impressive. And I want to wish you every success and whatever the future holds for you. And stay safe. Thanks for being with us. Thanks so much, Donna. You stay safe as well.